fly I'm going to demonstrate how to tie is called Joe's Bucktail Minnow. This, this pattern has gotten wide use in catching many different types of fish such as smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, striped bass, and tied on a saltwater hook has even caught a few saltwater species. Now the, uh, the concept of, of this pattern is adding the glass beads to the front forming the snout head area of the fly and is somewhat similar to the Clouster minnow, although the glass beads are not as dense as metal, there's not the dead weight in the drop, and this gives a little bit different action to the fly, as it makes more of a subtle drop instead of a quick drop. And the, uh, the hook that uh, I'm going to use is the Daiichi 2451 in a size 2, and for the belly, we have white bucktail. The wing is a gray bucktail. And you can even add some crystal flash in there, which is an additional piece of material that I will add as I tie this fly. The eyes are a prismatic 3D molded eye glued on using marine goop. This fly can be scaled to different sizes, such as a size 6 for the small small size or up to sizes 2-3-0 and you just change the beads and according to uh, the size of the hook that you're going to use and on the smaller hooks you can drop the the first bead and only go with one small and then uh, adding the, the large one behind it. I like the diamond the diamond type bead because it has that silver look and a lot of the bait fish patterns are, have this silver translucent look to them. So let's go ahead and break this down to the tying steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the barb so I can makes it a little easier to slide my hooks and my beads on. I'm going to thread two large beads onto the hook. I like working with the larger beads because they're easier to, to get on and and you don't have the tendency to stab yourself with a hook like you do with smaller, using the smaller beads. And one extra large diamond bead. Place it into the vise. I'll get, make an adjustment here. And now I'm going to add my fine translucent thread to the back of the bead. Add several wraps. Trim off the excess. I'm going to add white bucktail to the body. Now it's important when you select your bucktail that you find bucktail that's got real thin diameter hair. Okay such as this hair, which means when you purchase bucktail, you should purchase it first hand and not through the catalog because sometimes you'll get hair that's thicker and then as you tie it, it'll flare and the smaller diameter hair lies on the hook a lot better without fl flaring. You don't need too much and you can even them up by grabbing the tips and Pulling them out and then realigning them again if you want to get the tips more even. Okay, I'm going to rotate the fly upside down. Lay it right at the top of the hook. Now I'm going to grab the, the thread with my fingers and loosely go around and then let go and pull straight down to catch the, the hair. Now we're going to trim, trim the excess butts off. I'm just going to turn a little bit to see that how that I have the hair evenly distributed at least on top of the hook and and make sure it's not lopsided one side or the other. So that looks pretty good. It's right where I want it anyways. Finish tightening down the end of the butts. 
and I won't worry about this right now until after we tie the, the wing in. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of crystal flash, a little bit of glitter. This is mixed crystal flash and it's kind of a rainbow color. It has a nice little sparkle to it. The easiest way is to grab a few fibers, trim it off at the end next to the clamp of the, the stuff and bend it in half and cut it. Grab those fibers and cut it one more time. This is so that you use the whole bundle and you don't waste the fibers there. You kind of want the tips to be staggered. You don't want it straight cut so that when the light captures it, it sparkles. I'm going to lay this right over the top of the hook. Secure that down. Just going to make sure I got this on top okay. okay I'm going to go ahead and just tighten that down, trim off the excess. Uh, a little bit of sparkle there, it looks good. Okay, now we'll move on to the wing. That would be the gray bucktail. In the same way as I added the white bucktail, I'm going to add the gray. I'm going to try to get the thinner fibers. Cut off some hair out of the patch, the bucktail. I need to pull off, break out the short stuff and try to get my tips a little bit even. Okay, we'll trim off the, the end of the butts. Lay that on the very top. And again, bring the thread up and capture it with my fingers. Make loose wrap and then come down tight. Roll that over so it's a little bit. There we go. Trim off the ends of the butts. Okay. Tighten those down now. And now I'm going to do the half hitches to secure the thread. Pull it tight. Trim that off. Now I'm going to remove the fly out of the vise and get everything in position, rake the belly, get it down so everything's nice and flush together. Put it back into the vise. Now we're going to add the eyes. The eyes are really important because these, just like the, the beads add attraction, so do the eyes. It's interesting to note that when predators attack bait fish, they attack them by concentrating on the eye and they generally hit the prey head on and swallow it head first because they can concentrate on the eyes. And I'm going to use marine goop. to attach the eyes with. Use a bodkin, squeeze a little bit of marine goop out of the tube. Okay, using the rotary features I'm going to dab the glue on. Just roll it right on around as I add this glue on here. Get it fairly heavy on both sides because I want to embed those eyes fairly well. 
and I'm going to put the 3D eye molded eyes on using the hemostats. I want to press that into place, pack it in there. One side. Rotate it over and do the other side. Okay, and I can look at the top to get these eyes in the relative position so that they're lined up evenly and, on, and laterally positioned on the fly. And the nice thing about marine goop is it's malleable with your fingers without making a gooey, sticky mess. So it doesn't stick to you and then uh, end up getting all over everything. Well, that looks pretty good. Okay, and that's the completed fly, Joe's Bucktail Minnow, and tied in a variety of colors. It can imitate different forms of bait fish. Here's a relative tied in green and yellow. You can tie it in red and yellow and white, blue and yellow and white, blue and white. And again, in different sizes, size small size such as a six for a small shiner type bait fish, or maybe in a larger ot pattern to imitate uh, shad.